Galatians chapter 3, verse 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Galatians chapter 3. Now, I'm talking about living in the supernatural, and, and one, of my, one of my, I have, uh, I have 13 reminders uh, 13 reminders all throughout the day. Some of them are 15 minutes apart. Some of them half an hour apart. Some of them are an hour apart. And uh, I have them every day. I say them every day. And one of, the, one of them is this, living in the supernatural. One of the things that I proclaim over this church is that the supernatural is natural in Edmonton Word of Faith. See, for God... There's no such thing as supernatural. It's just automatically natural. It's natural to heal people. It's natural to, to turn their lives around. It's just natural to him. To us, it's like, whoa, what a miracle. Whoa, that was supernatural. No, you know what? To God, it's all the same. And, and we have to get to a place that we just believe that the supernatural is natural in this church. Amen? Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. So then, does he... Who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you? Do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith. Even so, Abraham believed God, and so it was reckoned to him as righteousness. See, he believed on the inside of him, in his believer, he believed God. What God said, he believed it would come to pass, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Therefore, be sure that those who are of faith, are you of faith? You're the sons and daughters of Abraham. This scripture foreseen or it was forecast, uh, forecast is foreseeing that God would, would justify the Gentiles by faith. In other words, by faith, we're going to be doing things. And it was preached um, before it was preached to Abraham, all na nations of the earth will be blessed in you, in you. So then those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham. Amen? We're talking about the kingdom of God and that we're closer today than we were yesterday to the return of Jesus Christ. And, in, when, and the closer we get, the more we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And I shared one last, last Sunday of, of a guy walking into, a, into a, a, a service, and he had just had an operation on his foot. He was limping, and God instantly healed him when he walked into this environment. What I'm, what I'm going to tell you is that we are going to create an environment where the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, and he is here today. And that we need, but the, the issue is, and I'm going to show you, why some places see it and some don't. There's two different kinds of systems, and we, we live in, on this earth, and, and that's one system. And uh, there's actually two systems. There's a world system, but then there's another system that we have to operate in as Christians, and we should operate in them, but it takes faith to operate in it. And if we don't operate in faith and believe God, believe that, you know, you may never have seen God, but you just believe that he's there and he answers your prayers and the extraordinary happens. You've been trained up to operate no problem. You can operate, you've been trained up and you can operate no problem in the world system. You know how... To go to the bank, borrow money. You know how to drive a car. You've been trained, right? You're trained on how to operate in this world system. But we need, I need to help train you how to operate in that other system, in the kingdom of God system. I personally believe that anything that is not lined up on this earth coming very soon with heaven, will be lined up with what's going to happen in heaven. Think of it. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy be done on this as it will come to pass. Adam and Eve. And I want, I want to show you this, that, that people, I, I don't care if you're Christian, you're non-Christian, who you are, that God placed them in the garden and he created Eve out of, 
out of an extra rib that, that Adam had. Some of you are laughing. Actually, not an extra rib. Took his rib out of there, right? My rib. And that's a whole other subject. God created man to be in God. We're to be in God, and God is in us. It's the same thing as this. God created fish to be in water. You take a fish out of water, what happens to it? It dies. The same as a plant. You take the plant out of, out of the dirt or out of the earth, and what happens to it? It dies. You take a man out of God, he dies, right? He dies. We need to get in Christ. You've been created to live and not die. You've been created to be a winner, not a loser. You've been created to be a champion, an overcomer. Amen? And I know this, that you want, because we live in a society, I mean, McDonald's came into existence. We want things happen instantly. We don't want to wait for it. And God is a God at some times and some situations and circumstances that things happen instantly. Instantly translated or instantly things happen. But there's also the God of overflow. See, I'm going to, this, this morning, I want you to see how important the word is on the, to get it in your believing, in your believer on the inside of you. He wants you to experience the greater. 2014 is the year of greater, the year of overflow, the year of unusual, the year of extraordinary to happen in your life. Today you must determine, is it God's will for me to experience these things or not in 2014? See, I believe it's for Roman, but I don't know if it's for me. Or I believe it's for, oh yeah, Mrs. Miss... Miss driving her Lexus, brand new Lexus, uh uh-huh, sitting out in the audience. Wahoo, she should be jumping and doing a dance. You need to expect it to happen every day in your life for the rest of your life. I'm going to show you something. One of my declarations, and I said this, is supernatural, extraordinary things will become normal in my life and in the life of Edmonton Word of Faith Church, and those that watch it, and those that are not here will not experience it. Why? Because if you never hear about it, how can you expect to receive it? I gave that example, remember? The, the man that was in, in Melford, Saskatchewan, and he wasn't, a, he wasn't a Baptist, but he's teaching in a Baptist church, and one day he, he decided he'd, he'd talk about Acts chapter 2 and, 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 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and about the gifts of the Spirit, talking about tongues. And his congregation got very upset with him talking about tongues because that church... Man, that's of the devil. Talking, of, talking in tongues was of the devil. And um, he taught it. Man, so I'm bypassing everything, getting to the last woman. And the last woman was a woman that was there from the very beginning. She was an elderly lady. And she said, and she phones him up on Thursday and says, Pastor, I want to have a meeting with you. And I was like, oh, I, I, I know those kind of meetings. <laughs> And he says, uh, and she says to him, she says, you know what? I have read the book of Acts. You know how many times in my life have I ever, I've read the book of Acts. And not once did I see where we need to speak in tongues and you keep on preaching what you're preaching. See, she read it many, many times, but didn't understand it. And see, that's where it takes a preacher to teach you this is what you can expect. 
if I teach it, you can expect it to happen in your life. And that's where we get testimonies. And, and I thought Irene was going to be here today and they give a testimony. Every time I, it's her turn to give the testimony, she's always absent. But we've got other, uh, another guy lined up for next Sunday. Amazing things happen in his life just since, since he started attending this church. It's just amazing. And those that are watching on the Internet, they'll receive it also. But those that are not here will not experience it. Unless they're in a church where they teach it. Where they teach that God wants more for you than what you're getting right now. My thoughts on this subject are continued day and night, day and night. I get up in the morning. This is another day that the Lord's going to do extraordinary in my life. I go to bed. I think, oh, Father God, tomorrow I know you're going to do extraordinary in my life. I don't know where, how, when. And, and, and it's, it's quite interesting I had to get to a place where I had to believe it. So I'm speaking it out. I'm speaking it out loud. I'm not going. I'm speaking it out loud. I'm, I'm like literally speaking it out loud. That the extraordinary is going to happen in my life. Every day. And I had to get to a place where I believe it. And then I speak it. And then as I go about my day, I expect to receive it. Amen. So on Friday, i just give you an example. And you say, well, you're just because you're a pastor. Well, let me tell you, I have to do exactly the same thing as I'm teaching you. I had to put it into practice in my life. And if, I, if it's happening in my life, it can happen in your life also. So I've been, I've been saying this like since January. I, I, I kind of like I'm going through each one of my declarations and teaching on what I, what I speak out. And um, so on Friday, I'm, I, uh, Sid and I, we had an appointment. We had to go do some things. And, uh, and uh, I had an appointment, and I went in and got uh, this appointment. Took me almost two hours. I got done, and I expected to. I expected to pay probably three, four hundred dollars, and I was like, I was kind of choked at my wife because I knew it was going to be expensive, and I was kind of like, "Honey, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't need to do this." And she's, "No, you do, you do," and I, and so I, okay, so I'm, I expected to do three, four hundred dollars, and and my wife's talking to this lady, and she's rushing this owner of the place. And, and after we're done, and she's talking to her, and uh, I got my wallet out, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to use my credit card or my, my debit card. And my wife says, we need to pray for this lady. She's going through a really bad situation right here, right now. And God needs to do a turnaround in her life. And I says, piece of cake. I know my God. I know he answers my prayer. I know that he does. So we ended up praying for this lady, and uh, we prayed for her and believed God. And, and I'm going back in uh, two weeks to see her again, and I'm believing for a, a praise report out of this. And so when I went to pay, she says, she looks at me, and she says, there's no charge. I go, no, 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 I got to pay something. She says, listen, no charge. I was like, and, and we got in the truck and Sveta says, y you realize how much this would have cost us if we would have had to pay? And I was like, yeah. And I says, do you realize that I speak every day that the extraordinary is going to happen in my life and I expect it everywhere I go? Like even going to the airport today, extraordinary things happen. I could go on and on and on, but let's move on. If it happens in my life, it'll happen in your life. Romans 13, 14 says this, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. I want you to catch this because I hope it'll stop your thinking and begin, and you begin to notice this phrase, make no provision for the flesh. Notice, who makes the provision for the flesh? We do. We have to make 
the provision for the flesh. <laughs> My wife got on the plane so far so good. Whoosh, I should tell her we prayed. Forget it. Who makes a provision for the flesh? We do. You and I do. Paul admonishes us, stop it. Stop doing that. The Amplified says this, but clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provision for indulging the flesh and putting a stop to the thinking about evil, about the evil cravings of your physical na nature to gratify its desires and lusts. If you continue to think fleshly thoughts, think about where you're going to go. It goes against your spirit. And we are desiring what? We are desiring the supernatural. We're desiring the extraordinary. We're desiring the overflow. We're desiring the greater this year. And that's what our spirit is, ex is excited about. It it's, it's pumped about it. But when we make provision for the flesh, flesh and spirit war against each other. And you have to make a decision which one's going to uh, be alive in your life and which one you have to put to death, to die. You know, like, like I mean, it talks about it in the Bible, you know, like uh, to live on to Christ is to be dead to myself. Myself is dead. Provision means this, advanced de de deliberation or advanced consideration. In other words, I'm, I'm past even the thinking. I'm, I'm already on the path. I'm, I'm advanced on my thinking on, on this direction and going. We need to listen more than we've ever listened before to the Holy Spirit in order to experience the supernatural in these last days. In Mark 16, 20, it says they went about preaching the word everywhere, and these signs followed them. Signs followed them, confirming the word. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, correct? Wrong. I was testing you this morning. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word. The Bible does not say faith comes from having heard the word the faith faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing in other words you need to hear it more than one time in other words you when i talk about the supernatural when i talk about what god really wants for your life you have to hear it and understand it hear it and understand it hear it and understand it to get to a place that your believer goes hey i, I i'm a child of god I, i'm i'm his son or i'm his daughter I, you know what? I, I can expect better things than what I, where I'm at right now. I can expect overflow. I can expect to overcome. I expect, yeah, well, you have things come against you? Yes. But in the name of Jesus, I am the Son of God. Did I say that? Are you a daughter of God? Are you a son of God? Are you brothers with Jesus Christ? Isn't that what the word says? Man, that kind of, that autom automatically, uh, religious people, when you go, hey, I'm the son of God, they go, <clears throat> in your dreams, here's where I'm going. John chapter 14. Jesus is talking here, and he's talking to his disciples. And if you ever read through uh, from John chapter 14, 5, chapter 16, chapter 17, you realize that Jesus continually goes over and over and over. He's trying to get something over to his disciples, and his disciples just aren't getting it. And they need to get it. 
And it's so interesting. He, he, I, I like the way that he has this conversation about his relationship with his father. So I could get into a conversation with you and say, hey, how's your relationship with your father? Whoa. How is your relationship with your father? See, he says things like, I and my father are one. If you see me, then you've seen my father. And it's the father that's in me that does the work. In order to see the extraordinary, you have to live in your life that you never stop talking about, you never stop thinking about it, because when you start talk, stop, stop talking about it, start, stop thinking about it, guess what you're going to lose? That very thing. It, it, I, I couldn't figure out. I, for um, a couple of weeks, I was really busy, and, and, I, and I had my things popping up on my iPad and on my computer, and, and I just deleted, deleted, and I wasn't saying anything. And then, I, and then one day I stopped, and I thought, I, you know, I, I just had some time, and I was going about my business, and I thought, why am I not experiencing the extraordinary in my life? Why am I not experiencing the supernatural should be natural in my life? Why is it not happening? And I said, Lord, why, why is this not happening to me? Hello? Why is this not happening to me? I, I don't understand it. He says, your mouth. I says, what do you mean, my mouth? He says, you have not been speaking the word. What you desire. My people perish for lack of knowledge, so I have that knowledge. I know what I'm to be doing. Or because you reject it. Hosea 4, 6. There's three things. Or because you reject it. Ah, oh, what do you mean healing? Healing doesn't belong today. Yeah, it went out with the disciples. I'm rejecting it, and you won't receive it, okay? The third thing is because you forget about it. You start forgetting about saying those things, and then you wonder, God, where are you? How come it's not happening on a regular basis in my life? And as he says, you forgot about it, and you have been so busy that you haven't been declaring it. And I can't do things if you don't declare them into existence. I can only do things as you allow me on this earth to do them in your life. Wow. I was like, I repented. I said, okay, God. First Kings chapter four, verse one to seven. Now, first Kings one to seven, and I'm gonna read a couple a couple verses, but let's start in first Kings four, chapter one. And we see where the woman went to Elisha and asked about a debt that she owed. And I won't read any of the verses, because I, I taught this a couple of weeks ago. And he said to her, what do you have? And she says, well, I have a little vessel with some oil in it, right? And he says, uh, he told her to go borrow as many uh, vessels as possible, and uh, then turn around and, and take your, your little vessel and pour it into all these vessels, and then go turn around and sell all of this oil. And... Um, Notice what the prophet had said. He said, what do you have? And I like that. What do you have? It's like when, when Moses, when God asked Moses, and Moses got to the edge of the Red Sea, and he says to Moses, he says, uh, Moses, what do you have? And Moses says, well, God, I have a stick. He says, I can work with that. See, God's always looking for something to work with. Could be your mouth. Could be your actions. It could be... You doing something. And, and he says, I can work with that. Stretch it out over the Red Sea. See, this woman thought she didn't have anything. She's just poor. She's in debt. She, she doesn't have nothing. You might look, you might think, well, I don't have nothing. I have absolutely nothing. For God to use in my household, I've got nothing in, my, in me for God to use in me. Well, let me ask you this question. How many here got Jesus Christ lives and abides within you? He's, made, he's, he's your Lord and your Savior. 
Okay? Okay. Those of you that didn't raise your hands, I will, I will pray with you after. No, <laughs> Joseph. Joseph. In, in 1 John 2.20, it says, those that are born again, those that have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are anointed. Anointed. Everybody say anointed. Who here has two hands? Let me see your hands. Okay, look at your hands. Did you know that those hands are anointed? To lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Don't tell me you don't have anything. You have two hands, you have a mouth. Right? You can lay hands on the sick and say, in the name of Jesus, rise up and be well. Amen? So you have something. The woman didn't think she had anything. And even though, see, it was in her belief, in her mind, she had nothing to work with. She had absolutely nothing. But it's so interesting because in the mind of God, God says, I have something to work with. See, it's whether we make a choice to be willing to, get, to do something with him. You don't have to do it on your own because he lives and abides within you. You have to make a choice to do something with him. Well, pastor, I don't know if it's his will that that person gets healed. Whoa. Is it his will that everybody on this earth gets, gets saved, goes to heaven? What stops you from telling the people, hey, you need to get saved. You need to, yeah, I want you to go to heaven. I don't want you to go to hell. You will do that, right? Well, do you know that it's his will more than your thinking or your belief for people to be healed and be whole? He wants people healed more than you do. He wants people saved more than you do. You have to have his heart. His heart is that people get saved. They get healed. They, get, they get begin to prosper. That's what he said in Luke 4.18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to tell you. Hey, poor, you don't have to be poor anymore. Brokenhearted, you can be mended. I mean, he, he went through all of the stages that a person can go from wherever they're at up one level to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. Amen? But God says, I have something to work with with this lady. And, he, and, she said, and he says, I'll multiply this oil. And he not only met her need, but he gave her overflow. I mean overflow. 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 Everybody say overflow. overflow. Well, in the same chapter, here's another story of another woman who made provision for the extraordinary to happen in her life. That was one extraordinary story, and I already shared it. This one is found in, in 2 Kings chapter 8, verses, uh, sorry, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17. And I'm not going to read it all. But it says this, in verse 8, it says, One day Elisha went to Shin Shinnom, where a rich and influ influential woman lived, who insisted on eating a meal. After when, afterwards, whenever he passed by, he'd always stop there for a meal. She says to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this holy man of God who passes by continually, let us make a small chamber on the housetop and put it there for him with a bed, a table, a chair, a lamp, and whenever he comes to us, he can go up on the outside stairs up there and rest. What did this woman do? She made a provision. She perceived that this man who was a representative of God, and everywhere that this man went, extraordinary things always happened. And what was she doing? She was making a provision for the extraordinary to happen in her household. The last woman was in her household. Isn't that interesting? This is in this household. What is in your household. Do you realize and notice something happened when she made provision for something extraordinary to happen? In verses 15 
16, 17, he calls her and he says, hey, um, lady, young lady, whatever, I don't know what her name was. You're going to conceive, you're going to have a son, and it's going to happen. Did she have a child? Okay, she had a child. All these years, no children. All of a sudden, she has a son, okay? Here's my question to you, because I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you think that she would have had a son, and this would have happened to her if she had not built a chamber in her house for him? Because the Bible says that Elisha walked by her house continually, continually, all the time. The anointing is continually, continually in your household, all the time. In other words, if she would not have made provision for him, the extraordinary would have passed her by, passed her by, day by day, month by month, year by year. Have you ever run into people and say, I, God never answers my prayer. He never does anything to me. He, I never see him in my life. Yet, it's interesting, if they're Christians, the anointing is there, and all they have to do is make a provision for the extraordinary to happen in their household. The question is this. If she had never given God something to work with, she would have had the anointing, the extraordinary, go right by her all the times, just as it did in Luke chapter 5 with the Pharisees and the doctors, the doctors of law. Luke chapter 5. Turn to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. See, every one of us needs to make a decision of whether we're going to allow the Holy Ghost to do things in our household or not allow him. Oh, man, my marriage, it ain't changing. Nothing ever happens. Have you made a provision? Have you done something that God can work with something? Luke chapter 5, verse 17 says, On, these, on these, those days, as Jesus was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who came from every village and town of Galilee, Judea, and even from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to, to what? To heal them. Say, some, say this to somebody here, sitting here right now. Say this. The power of the Lord is here to heal today. Those of you that are watching, got to know that. It's in your living room. The power of the Lord is here to heal you today. But as we looked at this in Luke chapter 5, was any of them healed? Any of those doctors, any of those Pharisees, were any of them healed? I know that they came from Jerusalem. They came from Judea. They came from all over the parts. They came out of Sherwood Park. They came out of Beaumont. They came out of Spruce Grove. They came out of St. Albert. They came out of Edmonton. They all came here, and I know that I know that there's people that need healing. Just like those guys. Miracles coming their way, and not one of them received a miracle. Say, some, say, some, say this to somebody today. I am here to receive my miracle today. <laughs> See, miracles are coming their way and not one of them received a miracle. Not one. Not one. Why? 
They didn't make provision for it. These religious leaders were not there to receive. They were there to criticize. Pastor Doug, don't you ever tuck in your shirts and your pants? What a guy. He's up there bald and he's going around. You're not here to receive. You're here to criticize. They were there as spectators, not participators. What's a spectator? Well, Pastor Doug, when you show me a miracle, then I will believe. See, a participator says, I'm here to receive my miracle, and I, by faith, I will do something that I could not do before. If I have to start running, I will start running. If I have to do something, that's a participator. A spectator says, hey, you show me a miracle, and then I'll begin to believe. Ah, I think that somebody else was in the Bible like that, wasn't he? Uh, show me the holes in your hands and a uh, hole in your side, and then I will believe that you're really Jesus. Right? Guess what? The supernatural passed them by. However, everybody say, however. There was a person who did get healed that day. He was an outsider. He was out there. Nobody's tearing my roof apart yet. <laughs> he was an outsider, and he was brought by some crazy friends. Do we have any crazy people here today? Yeah, we got a few crazy people here today. Why is it important that I do this every Sunday? How many prayed for somebody this week? All right. I like that. I like that. Put your hands up again. All right. Who did you pray for this week? Hey. Amen. Prayed for her waitress. Her car got broken into and, and some stuff got stolen out of it. So she had an opportunity to pray for her waitress. How many people, because I didn't ask this question last week, how many people led somebody to the Lord in the last two weeks? All right, all right. T tell me. Just a second. I got to get this on. Just stop. Just stop. So, so this lady, she, uh, she, uh, there's a man that, that's at where her mom's in, staying at. And, uh, and uh, he, she asked him the question. She says, uh, do you know if you died, if he'd go to heaven? And he says, oh, yeah. He says, I already have all my funeral arrangements made. Okay, so then... Amen. So she ended up leading him to the Lord, and he was so excited that, that he, he didn't realize it was that simple to be able to get into heaven. Um, I had the, and, and we had, we had, okay, put your hands up again. Led somebody to the Lord this week, or the last two weeks. One, two, three, four. Wow, way to go. 
I, I got to lead a, a, a lady to the Lord too and invited her to come to church. And, and so it's uh, exciting. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, five. I, gotta, I, gotta, I keep track of it. So I got to keep track of it. Okay, five. Okay, how many invited somebody to church this week? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Why is it important? See, these four crazy friends drug, literally drug, or carried this man to church. And they placed him right in front of where Jesus was. Do you see how important it is to invite somebody to church? Now, I want to say this. Once you bring them to church once, don't go, well, I brought them to church once, I did my duty, and now it's up to Pastor Doug whether he stays or not. Let me tell you, I have lots on my plate, and I don't necessarily, I cannot make phone calls. Um, praise God, we have Vinton who does make phone calls to first comers, but I don't have time. If, if I invited somebody, they came, it is my responsibility to stay in contact and say, hey, are you coming next Sunday? Hello? Okay. It isn't just up to me. We do all that we know what to do, but it's up to you to keep that relationship, keep inviting them, keep bugging them, keep them coming for four or five weeks, and eventually that they would stick. Why? Because I believe that the messages that they get taught here change lives. Amen? So, the Pharisees and the doctors did not get anything. They did not. Yet it says that the anointing, the extraordinary was present to heal them all, but they never got anything. But the one man that had four crazy friends where he, I mean, can you imagine? I, I mean, I, I'm up here preaching and all of a sudden in comes uh, somebody in the, through the back door and, and they got this person all bound up with duct tape and he's walking like this. And, we got your friend here. He's... Uh-huh. No? Why not? Drag them here. Kicking, fighting. No. They lowered the man in Luke chapter 50, in Luke chapter 5, verse 17 to 26. They lowered him down in front of Jesus. He got healed. Why? Because they had made provision for the extraordinary to happen in his life. They came expecting, they came desiring for the extraordinary to happen. They, could, they, were, they were like ready, whatever it's going to take to see the extraordinary, man, we're going to do it. By their faith, by their actions, they had given Jesus something to work with. And that's exactly the same with you and me. We have to make provision for the extraordinary to happen in our services. If you do not want to be a participator and see it happen, then I would gladly say, go to a church that doesn't preach it. Go to a church where you can just hear a good message and go home. See, I'm, I'm putting responsibility upon you. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, today, the power of the Lord is here to heal you. Turn to somebody else and say, today, the power of the Lord is here to heal me. Those of you that are on that internet, you need to say it. By faith, together as a corporate faith in this church, by your actions, you are actually giving God something to work with. And when you do that, you will not be disappointed. So your thoughts are to be on this subject continually, day and night. You need to be saying... I thank you, Father, that I'm going to experience the supernatural, the extraordinary today in my life. Father, I thank you. Tomorrow I'm going to experience the extraordinary, the supernatural, the overflow, the year of greater to happen in my life. 
I mean, if you've got to put it on your phone, you've got to put it on some place to remind you that every day God has something special for you. I'm anointed. I, I got on mine. I'm a pastor of pastors. I'm anointed to see, and to see the blind eyes open, the crippled people walking. I, I, I say it. Extraordinary things. When you come up, my service is over. When you come up and you need healing in your body, you need to come up expecting like that, that person that came with those four crazy people. When hands get laid on you, you need to go and say, Father God, I thank you. If, it, Norval Hayes always taught us this, that if you could not wiggle your little, your, you can't, your arms, you can't lift your arms or anything. He says, what you do is you begin with your little finger and you go, and you start wiggling, and you go, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you start wiggling your next one, and your next one. Thank you, Jesus. And pretty soon, you're all high And then you, your wrist. I, I was at a Jerry Savelle, and the next thing is like, whoa. And pretty soon, they're just, they took off, and they went running. And I thought, wow. And he says, you, by faith, have received your healing, and the person sped up. I mean, he just started racing. And when, when he started off, he was kind of going like this. But when he took off, all, it was like about a quarter of the way around, and all of a sudden, wham. Here he had two knee operations, and he had to believe God. He was believing God for his knees to be healed. And he got about a quarter of the way around, and see, he came up and gave God something to work with. And he's his father. See, he could have said, oh, I didn't go down. I guess the anointing's not on me. I just, I don't know. And, and, and Jerry had prayed for him, prayed for the next person. And all of a sudden, he just broke out a line. And, and, and the rest of them were standing there. And he broke out a line. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he started going. Got him out of court, and bingo, away he went. And he came up, and he's up, and he's at the front, and he's jumping, and he's praising God. And Jerry, Jerry stops. He says, okay, stop, stop, stop. And he comes over to this guy. He says, what's going on? He says, I had two knee operations. And he said, I could barely walk. He says, my canes are back there in my seat. And I came up in faith, and I left my canes. Whoa. Made provision for the extraordinary. And he came up and off he took. See, the anointing transferred from Jerry into this person. But that person has to make a decision. See, the doctors of the law or the Pharisees? Jesus could have laid hands on every one of them. Nothing happened. But when they made a provision for healing to manifest, Guess what? He got up. He raced. He jumped. Think about it. Peter and John, silver and gold have I not, but in the name of Jesus, they lifted him up. He went leaping, shouting, praising God. See, you gotta do a. You gotta do something. You do something. He says, I can work with that. I can make it happen now. Amen? Everybody stand up. Those of you that are watching via the internet, Father God, I thank you for the extraordinary to happen in their households. In their households that it will change. And Father, I give you praise, I give you glory, and I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for that we will hear reports. Yes, and I actually got testimonies. I'll read one of them next week from the internet. And so, Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for the extraordinary to continue happening in those that watch faithfully from week to week. In Jesus' name, amen.